Today is the sixth day in the octave of the Nativity of the Lord. Our Mass is being offered for the people in our Christmas Novena. We also include all of those who are in our parish prayer list, um, those who have the coronavirus or are suffering from the effects of the pandemic. Let us uh, together recite our entrance antiphon. When a profound silence covered all things and night was in the middle of its course, your all-powerful word, O Lord, bounded from heaven's royal throne. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the newness of the nativity in the flesh of your only begotten Son may set us free from ancient servant, from ancient servitude holds us bound beneath the yoke of sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I'm writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have conquered the evil one. I'm writing to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God remains in you and you have conquered the evil one. I do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father 
is not in him. For all that is in this world, sensual lust, enticement of the eyes, and a pretentious life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Yet the world and its enticements are passing away. But whoever does the will of God remains forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens, heavens be glad and the, and the earth, earth rejoice. rejoice. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we want to make sure that we do not read the Bible or interpret the Bible uh, in a uh, Platonic or uh, Albigensian, I'm trying to think what they were named at the time of uh, a Gnostic interpretation. The Gnostics and the Albigensians, they believed that the spirit was good and the body was bad. They might read this reading here and say, ah, <clears throat> do not love the world or the things of the world. Uh, we want to make sure that we understand that Jesus came in the flesh. Jesus came into the world in bodily form. He actually took our very nature. And so it is not flesh that is bad. It is not material that is bad. Rather, as St. John clarifies, for all that is in the world, sensual lust, enticements of the eyes, and pretentious life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Really what he's saying here is that it's from the devil. These are not things that lead us to God. These are things that lead us away from God. So 
How should we be acting? One, we need to avoid sensual lust. Does not mean that sex is bad. Sensual lust is when we take a person and we make them an object. Enticement of the eyes, when we get distracted by stuff, not, not in, a, in an immediate sense, but when we choose to follow something that's going to lead us astray. And a pretentious life. I don't know if we can do that during the coronavirus or not, but if we think that we do not need God, if we are puffed up, if we think that we're better than other people, we are leading a pretentious life. And this is not from the Father, but it is from the world. So now we can go back to the beginning of our reading, and it may make more sense. I am writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. So our sins have been forgiven. We don't want to get thrown off the course because you know him who is from the beginning. I believe that's a reference to Jesus. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God because you have conquered the evil one. This does not mean we can say, oh, we've conquered the evil one, now we can take a vacation. It's a reminder to us that the battle has already been won. We don't want to go and lose what was won. Because you know the Father. God has revealed himself in the Son, so we know the Father. Because you know him who is from the beginning. Again, we know the Father, we know the Son who was with him from the beginning. Because you are strong, and the word of God remains in you, and you have conquered the evil one. Look at all of these things that God has done for us, that God has done through us. We want to remain with God because God is eternal. The world is passing away. And again, how do we interpret this? In heaven, there is a new heavens and a new earth. So it's not the earth that's bad. It is this temporal, worldly, other than God, uh, things that are not as important. So St. John tells us, God has already done so much for you. Remain with him. He will remain with you. In God, we place all our hopes, for he is a loving father who has sent his son to save us. For the church, may we follow the example of Mary. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the world, that we will strive to build a just society that honors and supports families, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need of healing, especially uh, those suffering from the coronavirus or the pandemic, that we support each other and we forgive each other in Christ, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, May they know God's love. May they know the victory of Jesus Christ and remain in him. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly, for the weak and the infirm, that in this time of the pandemic, we may remain close to them, if not in body, in spirit, and in prayer.
we pray. And for all of those who we remember in our Christmas novena, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. All-powerful God, in you we find our strength. We ask you to hear these prayers, which we bring you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine that we come to share, in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising us, raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to its heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of host, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and to make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you 
by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world 
all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. This mingling of the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace let us pray O God who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament 
work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.